In this lesson, we are going to learn about the basics of data analysis and statistics. If you've had a stats course before, this lesson should be a review for you as we start with talking about an introduction to statistics and describing a population. In this course, we will focus almost exclusively on bivariate data. That is, we will examine and compare two variables. In nursing and the other health-related fields, we want to find that typical value to see where our patients are in terms of their health. We also want to correlate one variable to another, such as when we assign dosage for a drug intervention. To do this we need to understand our patients' data. We need a basic understanding of statistics. In nursing we talk a lot about evidence-based practice, right? We want to have the best evidence to make decisions, and to do that we need systematic research. We must be very careful as clinicians and researchers. When we do research, it's all about an inquiry. It's systematic, we do it to answer a question or solve a problem. We want to generate research data because we want to use an evidence-based approach that is as reliable as we can make it, right? We want the best outcome for our patients. We know our patients are getting information, data, about treatments from all kinds of sources, television ads, social media, friends, research articles they read online, etc. But how precise and reliable is that data? To answer that we have to know how to do statistics. So, statistics is the method of organizing, analyzing and interpreting all of that data. Our patients can Google information, but they may not understand the statistics or the data, and that's what one is going to have to explain to patients. So, in this class we're going to focus mainly on quantitative data. Much of this data will be physiological measurements. We always start by asking the research question and defining the problem we are interested in. We then collect the data and then analyze it through statistics. To do that, we are looking at what's called a concept, a characteristic or behavior we can end up measuring. This is what we call a variable, right? So, our first effort in statistics is trying to figure out what is our variable. A variable is something that takes on different values. It comes from the idea of concepts. In this course, we are going to see some different types of variables that we can work with. There are two types of variables that are important in a study, the independent variable. The dependent variable. The dependent variable is the one to think of first, it's the outcome. Right? What was their cholesterol when they ended the study? Did they get sick, or did they not get sick? Did they survive the treatment, or did they not survive the treatment? The other one is the independent variable. It is the hypothesized cause of or the influence on the outcome. It's often just the group they were in. Did they get the treatment or did they get the placebo? That's an independent variable. It just happens to be the group they were in or something causing the outcome. We will see more examples of these as we analyze data in the course. So, an example we can look at is that of smoking and lung cancer. We know that smoking is a 50-50 chance in regards to getting lung cancer. The independent variable here is their smoking status. Do they smoke or not smoke? And the outcome is, do they get lung cancer or not? So the dependent variable is the outcome, that's the lung cancer status. We want to see what disease this is going to cause, so that is our outcome, it is the dependent variable. Independent variables are characteristics, like what group they're in, what behaviors they're having and then others are created by researchers. That is what group we put them in, the control group versus the experimental group. Of course, the question we're going to ask and figure out the answer to by analyzing the data is the research question. If we hospitalize sick children, does music reduce their stress? And from those questions we start pulling out what our dependent variable and our independent variables are so we can analyze them. To do this, we must look at the qualities of our variables. Numerical variables can be discrete or they can be continuous and that depends on the data or the measurement level. A discrete variable is something that's finite. It's a counting number. You can't have half a patient. Right? You either have none, which is 0, 1, 2, etc. Siblings as a discrete variable. It is a whole number, like beds in a hospital. It has to be discrete. You can't have half of a hospital bed. Right? For continuous variables, in theory, they can have an infinite number of values between the two points. So, if you're doing miles per gallon, you can have 23.1 or 24.8. It's not a whole number. Time if it's running for an outcome variable, 
it's going to be continuous, it could be 12.8 seconds or 13 seconds. So, those are examples of continuous variables, and this will affect how we put these values into the software and what kind of representations we'll give to the data. This all involves measurement. So, we measure all this stuff in statistics and the levels of measurement depend on the qualities and quantity of the attribute. This is what researchers tend to struggle with all the time, what level of measurement do we have? The rules for statistics vary on what type of measurement you have. The simplest one is nominal. We put data into categories. And, sometimes we use numbers for categories instead of the label, which can be confusing as they're just categories, a nominal measurement that you cannot treat them mathematically. You can count them by the category. You can count the number of males and number of females in your study but mathematically you can't do most operations. You can't divide, subtract, etc., so nominal measurements are the lowest form of measurement. The next one up is ordinal. It's a little confusing here in that it's in a ranking. So, you use numbers to designate ordering, but it doesn't indicate distance between the values. So, if you say that 1 is no pain, 2 is some pain, and 3 is a lot, it doesn't mean that the difference between 1 and 2 is the same as it is between 2 and 3. So, it's just a ranking. Here you can't do averages. You have some mathematics you can do on ordinal level variables, but this is just a ranking of the categories. The next levels of measurement, interval and ratio, are the ones we do most of the stats on. Interval measurements are where the distance between values are assumed to be equal. So, temperature in Fahrenheit, pressure, and miles per gallon are all interval measures. The numbers between each one of the values are assumed to be equal. The other one we use a lot in analysis is a ratio measurement. The ratio measurement has a true zero. An example would be temperature in degrees Kelvin because in degrees Kelvin there is an absolute temperature zero, where there is no heat, no movement at all, and then the rest of the values have the same distances between the degrees. Ratio measurements have a meaningful and a real, rational zero. In statistics we'll see that as we do analyzes for each measurement level, you have greater flexibility as you go up. But the reverse is not true. So, a nominal level variable has the lowest mathematical operations that are permissible, right? Here it's just a category, like survive surgery or didn't survive surgery, it's just a classification they fit into, so all you can do is count mathematically. With an ordinal level variable, you have a category but you have a ranking, right? A direction you know, but we don't really know what the exact mathematical spacing or relationship is between numbers or classes, they're not equal but they're ranked, they're ordered, so you can count them, and you can rank them for ordinal level measurements and that's all. With interval level variables you can add, subtract as well as rank them. Then with the ratio measurements that have an actual zero, you can count multiply divide it and so forth, so as you go up the measurement level you get more mathematical operations that you can perform on the data. So, when you want to analyze data, you can collapse information to a lower level of measurement. You could sort heart rates into a category, like below 80 and above 80, and now you have a nominal level measurement. But the reverse is not true, you can't just record a patient as above 80 beats per minute, as a category and then use the 80 as a ratio measure in a calculation. You can't take a nominal level variable, and make it into a ratio variable. Right? As we open up data sets, and start to analyze data in StackCrunch in this course, you will see more examples that will help you understand the levels of measurement. If we look at a sample data set, used in this course, from the COVID-19 case study in Module 2, we can see and analyze different variables. Go ahead and locate the file in Module 2 and download it to your computer. Then load the Excel data into StackCrunch. You can then see the different variables and their level of measurement. Here, we have multiple variables that the study authors analyzed. You see nominal level variables, such as country of origin and gender. These are both categories. These variables can be analyzed in a bar graph or pie chart. We also see interval and ratio variables in the data set. These include age and the calculated exposure times, M1 and M2. These variables can be analyzed with a histogram, or other methods of analysis we will learn later in this course. By understanding the levels of measurement, 
statisticians can choose the appropriate statistical methods to analyze data and draw valid conclusions. This can help to avoid misleading results and inaccurate interpretations of data. We will discuss this further in the next lesson where we will learn about frequency distributions, tabulating and displaying data.